more practices with Newton's second law and free body diagrams. And in this case, they include tension. We talked about in class how tension is an easy force to work with because we know specifically the direction of that particular force. Well, let's see how all that comes together. Having to do with forces, this again is going to involve Newton's second law, which again implies that we should be looking at a free body diagram. So we have a girl on a swing. Here's a swing. And the swing is attached by not one, but two cables, but side views. We're only going to draw one. And this cable is 30 degrees with respect to the vertical. And so let's list all our forces. Well, first of all, we're given that she has a horizontal force pushing her. And presumably this pushes her away from the vertical because something has to hold her that way. This is just from your experience with swings and whatnot. And then we also know that this body is attached by these cables. Cables being tension can only pull away from the body along the string. So that's why we know that the force also is 30 degrees with respect to the vertical. And we're going to put in 2T in here just because both the tension goes the same way. We're going to just combine them into one single force vector in this case. And then last thing, you're on Earth, so of course you have your FG. And there's your free body diagram. In deciding our axes, in this case, the body is held at rest. So that tells us that my A acceleration is equal to zero. So then we have our total freedom to choose which way we line up our coordinate axes, our X and Y. In this case, since two of our forces is vertical and horizontal, and that our last force is defined with respect to the vertical, it would seem like the vertical and the horizontal, our default, would work well in this case. We could, of course, choose any other orientation. It just makes the math uglier. And so why do that? If we list out our sum of forces is equal to ma. We can then, first of all, decompose my tension force into i and j components. The horizontal bit is in the i, so that's going to be sine 30 degrees i hat plus cosine 30 degrees j hat. Careful here because the angle here is defined by the vertical. That's why the opposite is actually the horizontal bit, which has to do with the sine. And they're both positive in this case as we've defined it. And then your force that holds you up goes towards the negative x direction, so negative i. Gravity pulls you downwards, so that's negative j, and it all gets to be zero. Now to answer the questions, those have a and b because these vector equations we have one separate equation for i and one separate equation for j. This package here that we have actually allows us to solve for two separate unknowns, one in the i, one in the j. So first, to find out my tension, so we're looking for t, that's part a, we would prefer to not have to do with f because that's an unknown for now. So that's why we start by looking at the j hat component because that doesn't involve my unknown force. Shouldn't have to write that j hat in. And then it's still going to be equal to zero. fg of course is mg and then we can isolate for t, including that two in there because there are again two ropes, not just the one. So there we have our answer, 170 newtons keeping our sum of forces in view. The second question asks us for the F, and that will get from the I direction. And M times A, A being zero in both direction. So this is fairly trivial now. And for those of you that can remember it, sine 30 of course is one half, cancels out with that. Or you can take in your calculator and you'll find that by coincidence of the geometry, the force also happens to be 170 newtons. 
hopefully fairly straightforward putting good practice into drawing a good free body diagram laying out the problem properly and also knowing that that one f equals ma equation because it's got vectors we can deal with the i's and j's separately allowing us to end up with two separate equations to solve for two separate unknowns